thanks for joining me for another video. So today's video is not gonna be flash. I have flash for next uh, Monday because I'm just finishing a micro SD card and it's just a little bit complicated. So I didn't get a chance to finish uh, that one. But I recorded a different video uh, for today. And as you can see by the title, is a MacBook um, that we are uh, doing a forensic investigation. So uh, what I'm gonna show in this video is the forensic imaging of a MacBook that has a uh, NVMe drive. Now there's multiple ways of doing it. Uh, one way would be to remove the SSD if that's possible and put it through maybe a uh, DSpire Forensic Imager. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to use a different tool which I haven't showed yet, which is uh, Macquisition. So Macquisition is now a Celebrate product. Um, we've had it for many, many years. It's actually very useful when it comes to MacBooks that have a built-in SSD that you can remove. Um, sometimes a case might not allow us to remove the SSD. I mean, usually they do, but I mean, there have been uh, cases where they didn't allow us to open the computer which happens uh, unless it's completely necessary but in this case this MacBook has a um, file vault disabled which is good I mean if it hadn't enabled we have to ask the user for their password and uh, it's just one extra step in acquisition where you uh, unlock the drive but uh, other than that it's pretty much the same procedure as you see here and after the imaging we take the image now we have hash values because acquisition calculates the hash values we take that and we put it through um, forensic uh, software of choice. So in this case, I'm going to be putting it through uh, Magnet Axiom. Now I can't show the results obviously because it is a forensic case, uh, but I'll show you the entire process from start to finish, how this is done, the imaging, uh, checking of the hash values and all that. But anyways, let's get to the video. Okay, so here is uh, my acquisition. Um, it's just a simple USB, it's a bootable USB. And uh, if we have a Mac with uh, USB Type-C, then we use this adapter, we just plug it in here, and then we can plug it in. So let's uh, plug this in and boot the computer. So I also plugged in my target drive, it's a one terabyte, uh, just a normal hard drive. But you can use whatever, you can use the SSD if you like. So we power on while holding options on the keyboard because you, we don't want the computer to boot. So here's the boot menu, so we're going to choose Macquisition R1, uh, the other ones legacies are for other systems, hey, that's me in the camera there. So we wait for it to boot, and here it is booted, so this boots into an, like a forensic environment kind of, it doesn't access the hard drives, uh, doesn't write to them. Um, so here's the case, uh, we start a new case, so I'm not going to fill in any of this information because it is a private case, so uh, we're going to skip over that, and uh, we're going to go into the... Uh, Imaging tab. Oh no! First, we go to tools tools tab, and we're gonna have to erase our target drive. So we're gonna wait for it to show up. And there is our target drive. It's a USB drive. We're gonna format. Um, I usually format an HFS X, uh, but depending what I'm gonna be doing, I sometimes format as NTFS. So, anyways, uh, drives formatted, and now we're gonna choose our container, or we can image the entire hard drive. But, uh, in this case, we're gonna image if we're imaging the APS, APFS container only AFF4 is um, possible if we're doing full disk then we can do E01 in other forms and here we go imaging has started and that's how um, the drive is imaged forensically and you can see the hash values there on top because I, I've already done it here I'm just doing it for the video um, and there it is there's the target drive that the image is going to be saved to. Okay, so imaging is done. So um, now we are on one of my workstations and here we have um, Magnet Axiom. So we're going to investigate this computer using Magnet Axiom. Uh, I have one video on Magnet Axiom. It's a very powerful tool. It's, uh, we've been using it for quite a while since uh, it used to be called IEF and before that it was called something else. Uh, it's a Canadian product, so it's uh, um, developed by a former uh, uh, police officer. So um, it's it's really good. It's, it can it can find pretty much anything on a computer, whether you have a Mac, Windows, or, or Linux. Uh, we use it quite often uh, in cases. So how do we take this image that we've taken uh, from this MacBook and load it into here? So uh, since I have it loaded, this is the newest version. Uh, we're gonna create a new case. Um, I'm not gonna put the case number here because it's got a name in it. So I'm just going to put some uh, BS, we can choose other, um, we can put where we want it. Uh, usually I rename this to the case name and everything but and put it in a specific folder. But in this case, I'm just showing you how this is done. I've actually already loaded this case, this case is already done. 
Uh, but anyways, let's go into the evidence sources. So we have a computer. Uh, let me go back here once. So we can investigate multiple devices. We can do computer, mobile, we can do cloud. Uh, we don't have the cloud module enabled, so uh, I'm not going to be talking about cloud, but for uh, we can actually add multiple sources of evidence into a single case. So in this case, all we have is a computer, and there's also some iTunes backup on that computer. So we're, we're mostly after messages. So choose Mac and image. And um, so this is the image we created. Uh, we can see here. So we're going to open it. And now it just it takes a second to uh, to load the uh, the partition information from this uh, from this image. Now, if this image was uh, encrypted with FileVault, uh, there will be a little lock next to the uh, uh, the main container, APFS container. Now, this computer was not uh, enabled with FileVault, so we don't have that issue here. Um, so we're gonna go next. Um, here we can choose what kind of search we want: quick, full, sector level, custom. So I always choose full; it's not a problem. Um, this is a much older machine that I'm running it on. Usually I run it on another machine behind me there, uh, which is a Threadripper with lots of RAM and a very fast RAID 0 SSD. Yes, I know it's dangerous, but I need it for speed, and I don't care if that, that goes down. Uh, there's nothing nothing kept there for too long. Um, so a um, case like this will take about um, maybe six hours in that machine, and this computer here that we're on right now will probably take about a day. Uh, so even though it's... An, it's an, 8 core i7 with 32 gigs of RAM, it's still not enough. Even the Threadripper behind me is not enough anymore. So we're gonna have to upgrade that soon, pretty soon. So here we can add keyword searches, uh, categorize chat with uh, Magnet AI and all that stuff. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna skip all that. I'm gonna make a more detailed video about Axion eventually. Um, there's just way too much to unpack in this particular software to, to um, to add to this video, I want to make videos specifically on, on Magnet Axiom one day. Uh, just haven't got there yet. So, uh, when we go to Computer Artifacts, uh, here we can choose what we want. So we can, uh, you know, we can choose um, if we want to look for iOS backups, disk images. So um, in this case, all I really wanted is uh, chats. So all we do is select chats, all of them. Um, we don't care for cloud storage, so we can we can go over every single artifact here. We can choose what we want, what we don't want. These are my custom built artifacts I've I've built over time. You can see almost uh, 1,300 of them. Uh, we because like I said, I've been using this for so long. I have uh, a lot of custom artifacts set up. We can do documents, email, uh, encryption, uh, different media types. Um, we can do memory uh, capture if we need that for a specific reason. Um, here's different operating system artifacts. Now. These here are great because you can find so much about the operating system itself. There's, uh, you can find out if there was a USB plugged in and things like that. So, uh, you know, it, uh, when we deal with companies and they want to find out if the employees have been up to something uh, there shouldn't be, we'll use this. So let's deselect everything. Um, actually, we'll just leave it the way it is. I'm not going to run this case now. I'm going to just show you which steps we got to take to get where um, in this uh, to start. And if I click Analyze Device Evidence, it's going to start analyzing. So we're not going to do that. We're going to go straight into the case. So here's the case finished. This is the folder that it's uh, saved it in. So we, ha we got about 190 gigs, I think, if I'm not mistaken, total. Yeah, 185. Um, so we're just going to double click the case MDF, um, MFDB, sorry, and then we're going to load it up and we're going to see what was extracted. Now, a lot of this stuff I'm going to have to blur it out because Clearly, it's uh, someone's case, so we don't want to show anything uh, identifiable and uh, you know expose our client to the internet. We don't want to be doing that. And here we are. We're done loading the case. Um, so as you can see here, uh, for the evidence, uh, we only have that one disk image, but you can add more evidence if you have a, um, if let's say uh, those multiple the devices that were be, that were seized, whether it's a computer, computer uh, phones, uh, USB drives, then we will add them all into this evidence uh, container. And then we can work at all of it together, and then we can run maybe uh, things like um, connections and and things of that nature. Now I'll, I'll get to that in future videos, uh, but um, but as we can see, there's a lot of things we can view here in the dashboard. So let's just go into straight to the artifacts and see what we got. We got 1.7 million artifacts. Um, so let's let's view them. Okay, so 
this is all the data that we have uh, from this com computer. So I actually ran everything on this on this Mac just 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 for the sake of um, um, showing what can be extracted. So we see uh, we have classifieds, uh, cloud services, credit cards, dating sites, Facebooks, um, uh, pornography, and this is all all the information that the software um, found as categorized for you. But you can you can drill down. And open um, other web-related um, per browser um, different uh, categories, so media history and extensions and autofill information, things uh, things like that. So you can you can really go deep down into individual browser and see uh, what the person was doing. Uh, we have chat information, so if there's any chatting app that being being used, uh, we can see here there's a lot of chatting on this computer. So. Um, and this is what we mostly after in this system. Uh, we have some emails. Uh, we have uh, uh, here's operating system stuff. So you can see here for the operating system, uh, we have AirDrop stuff. So AirDrop is really important because we had cases where someone was um, sending information back and forth between the computer and the phone. Um, so uh, the case was basically um, we had the phone, we had an iPhone, and we had a computer. We were able to prove that uh, the phone. It was being used to send emails and then airdrop information between the computer and the phone. So um, I can't really say details about what really happened, but it was uh, this airdrop information really helped the case. So that's it for this video. Like it, share it, subscribe. You know the drill. Next week I have a video about a micro SD card. It was a very interesting case, a little bit complicated, but I'm gonna do my best to explain how it was done. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.